Okay, buddy. Welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for for coming on the show. Hey, no problem, man. <laughs> so like there's the, so much light coming through behind me. It's absolutely pouring out, and like it looks like it's wait, bright really? back there. It's crazy, yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, usually when it's it it's pouring out, it's 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 dark and gloomy and makes you not want to do anything. <laughs> well, that's I guess Florida. You know, the sun's out even when it's pouring out. So that goes. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> So it's so like the first thing I want to start asking you before we start talking about how how you got involved with 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 this great sport of of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I saw you also do some acting uh-huh. and you do shoot too, photo shoots. And um, yeah, was yeah. there any shoot? Was there any shoot that you had the most the most fun doing? Yeah, I would say probably the the most fun thing I ever did was I had my own scene in Shazam Two: Fury of the Gods. Ultimately. It got cut out of the movie, but uh, I mean, when I filmed that scene, it was pretty incredible. You know, I had my own trailer, and then you know, I had like oh, my shit. own assistants. Like everybody was like giving me whatever I wanted. I was like getting like custom food orders, which was cool. And it was only a day shoot, but uh, you know, I had my own wardrobe, and then I got to shoot my own scene, like front and center, in a hundred million dollar movie. And I had all the cameras on me, and it was all about me. But they cut the scene. They did use my voice in one of the scenes, I guess, in the background. So I still get residual checks from them, but not the huge residual oh, checks I would get if uh, I was in the movie like that. So it's kind of a bummer, but that was the most fun I ever had shooting a movie. I mean, it was pretty great. Nice, nice. And I see you also did a horror film, too. I'm a big horror guy, and... um would you be open to doing more more horror films? Yeah, man. I, I, I was actually cast in a couple others that never happened. I was supposed to be in one with Richard Grieco. And uh, I don't know what happened there, but it didn't uh, It didn't happen. So that one was out the window. But yeah, I did. I, I had a small part in a, in a Lloyd Kaufman, was that Poultry Geist? And my, my band yeah. was... Yeah. My band was on the soundtrack, I believe. I, I don't know. That's what the... I mean, we shot our music video on the set of there for that, and we had Ron Jeremy in it, who's, you know, unfortunately not too popular these days. But uh, at the time, he was he was pretty huge at the time. Uh, yeah. So I did that. But that was a long time ago, man. I'm talking like... It had to be like 2005. It was a while ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh? Do you Do you still play with the band yet i mean you still keep up with playing playing songs playing some music yeah i write for a lot of people you know these days i've been rolling with the smashing pumpkins a little bit i don't know if anybody's seen but uh but yeah but uh it's cool you know like i mean i don't i don't actively oh there goes my whole little setup i don't actively (laughs) uh i don't actively play in the band with them but i definitely have uh shared a little musical experience and input and uh so it's been it's been a fun ride and definitely been on a lot of gigs on the tour and uh i help out when i can so it's been, oh there goes my thing sorry man i'm just trying to rig this up so it's all good i'm not i'm not on my computer like i normally have so trying to balance my phone against some stuff so i don't have to hold it so let's see if this does yeah it. that's that's sorry that's guys we're I'm... a work in progress here that's what I'm doing too. I'm I'm still at work yet, so I'm doing it on my phone. So, gotcha. <laughs> and when did when did you know like you you wanted to get in this amazing sport? Like like who were some wrestlers that you loved growing up watching, and what drew you to want to do it? I uh I, I made the decision when I was in second grade and uh second grade yeah no I've never backed down from it since then I got it in writing too I can prove it so uh yeah you know I mean it was always the classics people like Hulk Hogan guys I'm friends with now you know I mean that was uh it's weird even when I was in second grade I saw myself as an adult and uh I, it wasn't a matter of uh if it was a matter of when so you know it's definitely cool <laughs> knowing all these people and. A lot of the legends I wrestled before and you know, I just never it was never it never felt out of reach to me ever. I always like like when I was a little kid, I would have bet you anything I owned that I would wrestle Jake the Snake one day and I did. 
So it's like, and I did awesome. multiple times. So it's like, you know, I mean, to me, it was just never, it was not a surprise. I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it sounds weird and crazy, but just the truth, man. Uh, yeah. And where did, where did you wind up training at? Like who, who was your trainer? So the earliest days of my training were at a place called the LIWF Doghouse, which was pretty much run by Homicide. He wasn't who trained me there, though. And uh, it was Homicide and Loki pretty much ran the place. And then um, passed there. And I trained with a local guy. who was like an old timer. His name was Crazy Don Rock. And then past that, I trained with Mikey Whipwreck for a little while. And then past that, I trained with Sabu for a little while. Wow, sweet. So it's a good pedigree. That it definitely is, yeah. <laughs> and when you're training, like how how long did it did it take you to get used to like the bumps, the rope burns, and everything that comes with it? So honestly, I probably got over that all in the first day. I mean, we had like the worst, hardest first day of training ever. I was doing stuff I should have never been doing, but there wasn't a lot of enforcement. In the uh, let me see if this helps you. There was a lot of uh, enforcement. In the, uh, sorry, I'm trying to make this thing so people don't like, but uh, nobody was really supervising, even though there was a local guy training us, they were kind of letting us do whatever we wanted. So, my first day of training, I was taking power bombs and superplexes, and so I just was never one of those people. And I mean, yeah, it hurt, it was horrible, and but I was never one of those people who, like, after the first day, I was like, okay, I can do this, like, it doesn't. It hurt, but I just didn't care. And uh, so I, it was never one of these things where, like, oh, this is too physical for me. It never was. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Which I don't think is normal, by the way. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's normal for most people. <laughs> hey, you know, if if you can do it, if your body can take it, you, you know, do it, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And you you worked it like like you were saying like you, you worked a lot a lot of the top the top guys like Jake and Foley and Road Warrior Animals and Nasty Boys and is, is, Terry is Funk there, Terry Funk yeah <laughs> yeah there's been a lot of guys I've been doing <laughs> is there anyone like you would have loved to work that you didn't get a chance to oh I mean I think Hogan would have been one I wish I could wrestle him. Uh, Macho man too, you know, and I, I wrestled, you know, his brother, the genius, and he told me, uh, which I, I still don't know if I believe it, but he told me to this day, he said, like, after that match you just had with me, he's like, if my brother saw that, he's like, he would have called Vince McMahon and been like, I need to work with this guy. And he said, based on the fact that, he said, based on the fact of what it was for our cherry match, as he called it, because it was our first match against each other, and he said, the level that we went at, and he said, considering he was old and didn't care and I still he's like you brought like the best parts out of me in there and whether that was true or not or he was just feeling the emotion uh I mean it was still a really insane cool compliment and one that always yeah. sticks with me and you know and uh you know obviously last year he passed away too but it was uh it was something I always talked about with him you know I'd always ask him every time I saw him I would always be like really mean when you said that like your brother really would have wanted to wrestle me and he was like yeah absolutely he was like Dude, He's like, he would have loved it. He's like, you were the perfect size. And like, he's like, you know, you're a good mix of, you know, athleticism. And he was like in character. And he's like, he would really, he's like, he would have been all about it. So if the Macho Man would have been calling Vince McMahon saying he had to wrestle me, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll take that compliment. <laughs> my man, like, that was always my, my guy. Like when I was watching wrestling growing up, like I was always, I was always a Macho fan. And, Hogan, Hogan was second. Like everyone, like my age, loved Hogan, but I was always macho above Hogan. But I still love Hogan, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I never really got to meet Randy. I, I don't, I don't know him at all. So, I, I, but like, I'm sure he's cool. But like, you know, Hogan's cool. I feel like he gets a bad rap nowadays and whatever. But I've never seen him be anything but a super humble and nice guy. So I, I just don't see a lot of the negative things that people say, but I'm not saying that they're not true. I don't know, but I'm saying I can only go off the interactions I have with people, you know, and on the flip yeah. side of the coin, just to modernize it, I can't tell you how many people tell me, you know, top dollar AJ Francis is a jerk and a bully and a this and that. And 
I mean, he's one of my close friends. I never, I've never had a bad interaction with him in my whole life. Never had a real argument with him ever. So in years, so I just don't see it. So I, you know, people say a lot of things, but like I can only go off. You know what I'm saying? So it's like oh, yeah. it's one of those things. I feel like a lot. Hogan gets a lot of hate. Hogan probably gets a lot of hate because of who he is, and it is what it is. And I mean, you know, obviously he did have that other little situation, which I don't condone and whatever. But I mean, I think anybody could see the specific and awkward nature of the entire event and not that you want to give them a pass but you're just like all right man like it wasn't your typical it wasn't your typical bad talk it wasn't like he was out in the street doing it not that it makes it better that you do it behind closed doors but again the situation that he was in and who he was talking about and why because i know a lot of fathers who have guys sleeping with their daughters and i'm pretty sure they'll call him every insult in the book especially if that same guy was costing them lots of money so again not saying it's right, but just saying you can kind of, you know, maybe see where the level of hatred was coming from. And I think if people who have uh, teen daughters or adult daughters would be like, uh, you know, that's pretty on par for how I feel about when I do banging my daughter. That's all I'm going to get into about that. I'm not going to not going to trap myself as a uh, sympathizer because I'm not. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's <laughs> And like out of out of all the guys you work, like who do you think? Uh, uh, <laughs> Call me from the bunker over there. I don't know, man. I'm trying to help you. Okay. <laughs> um. Out of out of all the guys you worked, like who do you think was the top toughest person you you fought? The toughest, well, I'd say strongest would be, uh, like I said, top dollar AJ is physically the strongest by a mile. Like it's not even close. Uh, toughest, I got to think about it for a minute. I don't know if I can outright answer. Saying if I think of the legends, who was the toughest? I mean, yeah, the legends, the toughest is Sabu. Oh, okay. Like Sabu, like in the fall. Like one time he like fell horribly wrestling me and like got so messed up and you know he's like ah like dying, but got up and kept going. So I gotta say he's pretty tough. <laughs> Oh, wow. in, in contrast where like a guy in contrast where a guy who looks tough and I really liked was Balls Mahoney but like in the ring he's the biggest pride baby in the whole world <laughs> like for real so I mean it is you know it's what it is <laughs> and um you you work you you mentioned like you you you, you did some stuff with with Billy with music wise and but you also wrestle for him too right. and you know that that wrestling league is one is is a league that's been around for a very long time and what's it like working for the Billy oldest in the history of the world my friend oh my god yes uh, like, i uh i love it there man i mean it's uh you know i think with any company there comes all these politics and all these things and i think sometimes scenes i get a little heat for being so cool with them but like it's totally not related in my mind there's never been a time i've ever politicked anything or asked for anything special or that i didn't deserve or whatever just because i'm his friend like i those two things are totally separate to me um so i think like as a company uh, it's a it's a great company. I think, you know, with any company, there's this, like I said, there's these politics and this BS. And I think yeah. every single one of the companies would be better off without that stuff. But I think it's just the nature of wrestling. And, you know, people, if I had a wish, if I had one complaint, like I said, I just wish everybody would be focused on doing the best job they can for themselves and then doing the best job they can on behalf of the company, if you can combine those two things, I think the sky's the limit. And I think a lot of people do do that, but I think there's a few that don't. And I think as time goes on, those kinds of people will be the ones that, you know, fall off the wagon and happens. It's, like I said, it's not my place to say. 
uh, yeah, too. Yeah. But you know, I like I said, I, I think uh, it's a tremendous company, and I think what is going on there is like a rocket ship going up. I think we're constantly going up, and I think that's evidenced in this last year. It's been a big jump. Oh yeah. Well, at least it kicked it back automatically for you. So, okay, I yeah, I think we're back on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just the, the okay. cuts out. I don't know. But yeah, like I said, I think I think uh, the company's way on the up, and it's an experience, and I've learned a tremendous amount. Uh, you know, especially about what it takes to be a quality TV performer. I think that's mm -hmm very valuable and i think you know my recommendation to a lot of the other talent would be the same man is realize you know especially a lot of the newer guys that are there it's like this is a true tv experience and you oh. need to learn this if you want to have a career in wrestling so i think the nwa is amazing in that regard that they take chances on your guys that maybe somebody else won't and Billy is definitely the driving force behind that. So all, all credit where credit's due. And I think it'll pay off in the long run. So I think it's I think the NWA is primed for another big year. Yeah, definitely. Like they they they've they've done a lot better, like you were saying, in the past year. Like they they got like a good deal going going on now and, and the wrestling has been off off the charts and it it, it it's it's great like it's great it's great to watch like even as a fan watching a show it's it's definitely it's definitely getting right up there and i could see it like going along the lines of tna and aew yeah i don't think there's much separation if any between tna and wa you know aew is a lot more big budget you know obviously so is wwe those two are kind of the big budget ones where you know the owners are spending you know a billion dollars annually uh so that makes a difference but yeah i think as far as any other promotion i think the nwa is is arguably you know the, the third in this country oh, yeah. you know i mean people can debate it and say oh it's cna or it's this or it's that to me it's all the same at that level i think both companies have a lot of good talent and i think uh you know, it might just be a preference thing or an in the moment kind of thing where someone's like, Hey, I like this better right now, but then two weeks from now they feel like I like that one better. It's not it's very neck and neck. So I mean, even that in itself is a huge accomplishment. So I, I think it's I think it's certainly enough to ignore. And I would recommend to anyone listening or whatever, if you don't know what we're talking about, go download the CW app. It's free. You don't need cable you don't you don't need a cable provider there's nothing else to put in there except an email address you'll download the app on your phone and boom you can watch nwa plus you can watch whatever other shows maybe like one of these other shows like gilmore girls or whatever the heck's on that <laughs> no yeah right <laughs> and um and what's it like working gossip girl i don't know <laughs> I know you get you got you got all those 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 crazy shows, right? <laughs> yeah, they got all those ones. Yeah. <laughs> and what's it like to work outside of the U USA? Like when you travel overseas to like to W WWC, like you won the television title there. And what's it what's it like working overseas compared to working here in the states? Well, here's a uh, fun fact for you. Puerto Rico technically is part of the USA. Um, oh. <laughs> but I showed you how much is. I know, right? <laughs> uh, most people don't know. Honestly, it's crazy. Most Americans don't know. It's, uh, it's part of the U.S. You, all your identification is valid there. It's still the U.S. dollar. They speak really? Spanish, but it's everything's it's American. It's Oh, yeah. Dude, it's, oh. it's not. It's 100%. It's owned by the USA. Puerto Ricans are American citizens. So... Um, you know, that's the deal with that. But yeah, I love working there. And the thing is, there's not many people like me wrestling on the island. And, you know, I'm very grateful for the for the niche I've carved out there. And 
I definitely don't take it for granted. It's very special to me, and I hope to be wrestling. I, I love being in WWC. They're certainly the top company there. They've been there since 73 or 74. And I mean, I hope I stay there as long as I possibly can. I mean, but you know, sometimes in business that doesn't happen. And I've definitely, before I got there, I floated around in a few other feds there. And, uh, but I, I'm very happy there. Like I said, I had won the TV title, which is really cool. And that was a very classic title with a lot of history, not just in Puerto Rico, but you know, guys like the great Moodle won it. Chris Candido won it. A lot of guys had that belt. So for me to be a part of that lineage is really cool. Obviously Carlos Colon had it. Um, so there's a lot of big names that have, even Ray Gonzalez had it, like all the main players ever in the history since the seventies have had that title. It came out in the early eighties. And, um, uh, so I'm very grateful to have that title and I'm very grateful to, to be a part of all that. But, uh, I mean, yeah, when I go to other countries, it's always interesting experience. Uh, I got Panama coming up in a few weeks and, um, mm -hmm. I've never been there before, so it'll be cool to see Panama, you know, and meet the fans there and wrestle and see what the whole atmosphere is like there. Uh, I mean, I, I got a feeling, I feel like a lot of the, that, you know, the, the Latino crowd, I feel like a lot of them are the same type of vibe, you know, whether it's Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico or Mexico, or, you know, I just feel like somewhere in this, in the Southern parts of the hemisphere here, it's uh, the fans are all very passionate in a certain way. And, it's definitely a treat. It's definitely different from in the States, the way the fans act. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and for wrestlers in the States, if anybody's watching, it's like, what would you compare it to? Well, if you ever did a, a real Lucha show in the States, you know, where it's very Mexican, that has that feel. That's like a small, like a small version, a sample of what you get when you go, when you go to the real Mexico and you go to the, you know, the real Puerto Rico and you go, so it has these vibes. So, I mean, it's not something you can't imagine. It's just something that's really cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And, and you, you're part of a, a, a new WWE show and how did, how did you get to be part of that? All right. So here's the uh, fun facts about this. So, so now that it's come out, <laughs> So, so now that it's going to come out, I already came out. So, um, I'm in the trailer, but ultimately I don't think you see me in the show. So that's, oh. that's just something I, I didn't know. I was called by the people to tell me that I was in the show, uh, not just in the trailer or the commercial, which never makes sense to me in a million years anyway, because like <laughs> when you see the coming attractions for a movie, it's usually the best parts, right? So yeah. apparently... What I'm guessing, what what I would guess have to happen there is that they had a, a larger segment with me in the show and then ultimately cut it down. And then we're like, all right, we don't need this. So they cut it out. But I'm, but when they made the commercial, the trailer part, they probably made that at the beginning of the process. Like after they had filmed everything, they made the trailer. Here's the trailer. Okay, let's edit the show now. And then, I mean, that's just my guess. But you know, the world can see it. I'm right there in the trailer. I'm wearing a shirt like this, except black. I got my braids in my hair. It's there. It's me. But uh, not in the show. So uh, if you want to watch it, watch it. If you want to watch me, watch the commercial. There you go. Yes. All I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> and my guy, the guy that I was helping, the guy that I helped and I had the segment with that they cut is the same guy that they cut by, like, uh, show three. He was cut out of there. So... I mean, it is what it is, but hey, it's uh, showbiz. And uh, very bizarre, though, that I got a phone call telling me I was in the show. And I was like, all right, let yeah. me tell the world here. And then I tell the world. And then I'm like, a show comes out. Somebody messages me and says, hey, I watched the whole show. I didn't see in it. So then I'm like, oh, BS. So I looked. And I was like, oh, they're right. I'm not in the show. So there you go. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. I could probably be like, uh, you know, I could probably be a probably be a wrestler about it and be like well you know they, they find out i'm in nwa so they had to take me out that's not what happened it was, it was not they told me i was <laughs> in the show up until the day of, and then the show came out and then i'm not in the show so i that's I don't know what to tell you. funny actually <laughs> honestly but there is a show coming out that i will be on and it's a reality oh. show and i will be one of the 
one of the, if not the main star of the show. So that'll be out very soon. So, And what's the show called? I, I'm not going to give you any more information on that other than it's what's been released on the news. It's, you know, it's NWA related. So it'll be, uh, it'll be, oh, I don't okay. know what they can and can't say. So it's, I can tell oh, yeah, you that. Definitely. The show definitely. Okay. Stuff, period. Awesome. Awesome. And when you're not wrestling, what do you like doing during your your free free time? Um, generally, I like eating junk food and working on my old Corvette. I like have, you know, it's, it's pretty much, you know, I, I never understood why people like stuff like that, and then you start working on it, and you're like, you know what, I, it's something to focus on that's kind of fun and like take your mind off things, and so pretty cool when you start me it, it's not cool in the beginning when when the car's junk and doesn't work but when you get the car running good and you're making cool upgrades to it it becomes really exciting nice nice so that's uh sorry i was just getting a phone call there i had to oh, okay. lock out but uh <laughs> but yeah i mean so yeah it's my that's my hobby is working on my 79 corvette and uh eating junk food well you 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 look like you're, I mean, you can see you're in really great, great shape. You're a big guy. And um, what do you, what do you do to train? And, and do you, do you follow like any kind of like mm. special diet? Cause you say you eat, you eat junk food. So do you follow any kind of diet? Yeah, I know. Generally, yeah. Generally I eat very clean. Like, you know, I just eat like, it's the basic bodybuilder BS mm -hmm. diet. Like, you know, you just eat bland chicken and rice and broccoli and, you know, you drink water. That's, I mean, that's generally, and on days when I don't do that, I'll eat anything and everything, which is amazing, nice. which I probably do too much. That's why sometimes I get a gut like Aaron Sheik. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel like the Aaron Sheik, like jacked arms and just a round <laughs> belly. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, I got to enjoy life a little bit too. It's not, uh, it's not all about having ads every day i don't really oh yeah not you know it's, it's sometimes i regret it a lot i regret it a lot when i got to do a show and i'm like oh man it's so fat but <laughs> you know generally i don't regret it okay <laughs> and, um, it's only it's only when the guys in the front row are like you're fat <laughs> and i feel lousy <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of songs do you like listening to? Like what's on what's on your your play playlist? I mean, I like a, I like a mix between like eighties new wave stuff, and then I definitely sprinkle in some eighties metal, and then uh, nice. the I guess the wild card of, the wild card of it all would be. You know, I live on the beach, so I listen to a lot of these, like, fake... Well, I listen to real reggae, too, like, old school. But, like, past that, like, a lot of these faker ones, you know, like, the dirty heads and slightly stupid and, like, you know, like, basically, like, white dudes playing reggae. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, I guess it's my, like, uh, guilty pleasure thing. It makes me happy. So I, that's, that's what's in my playlist. Okay. <laughs> And if you were gonna do a karaoke song, what do you think you would sing? After after a word from our sponsors, we've returned. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Blue Diamond Almonds. Have you had your can a week? <laughs> uh, what they do on AM radio and WFAN New York. Right, right, exactly. Yep. <laughs> so, um, if if you were gonna if you were gonna sing a karaoke song, what do you think you would sing? Myself by the Dimples. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, no. Uh, I, I didn't hear what, what, right. what you said. It caught out a little bit. 
I said, I touch myself by the divinals. <laughs> hey, you know, that's, that's, that's a really good, that's a really good song. Though. I like that song. <laughs> there you go. Uh, said it without hesitation. So, you know, I've done before. Exactly. <laughs> and, I said earlier how much of a horror fan I am, so I always ask my guests this when they're on, are there, are there any horror films that you like to watch? Only the classic ones, man. I like all the Nightmare on Elm Streets. I like a lot of the Friday the 13th. You know, I like some of the random, like, 80s ones. Past that, I, I this new, you know, era of horror stuff, like, you know, like the Saw and the... Yeah, I don't know what these insidious and these. I just they don't. To me, I'm just like doesn't work for me. I really hated what was supposedly a horror movie, which was uh oh why do I why am I why can I not think of the name of that terrible movie? <laughs> uh, I blocked it out mentally. It's like the worst movie yeah, I, I ever saw. The one with the <laughs> it was the one with the what was the name of that movie with the little girl and she was like doing the like the I hate that movie so much. And in the end, <laughs> I think I figured it out in a commercial <laughs> break. It was a uh, hereditary. Hereditary, yes. Hereditary. That that movie, uh, what you know, a pile so of shit. I I totally agree. Like, there's so many people when I ask them their favorite horror movies, Hereditary is always in it, and I don't understand why. I would rather you chop my finger and make me watch that movie again. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievably bad. I know, I know, exactly. <laughs> and the do, only do real still... horror, the only real horror I can imagine about that movie is having to rewatch it. That's the that's the scariest part for me. Yes, I I feel There's the same. Two and a half hours of your life, you're never getting back. It it was so slow too. Like I I I, I was like it was horrible. When, it was the when... dumbest movie I ever saw. I, I yeah, like like I'm watching. I'm like, when's the good parts gonna happen? It, it was like so slow. There wasn't any. It was like it reminded me of like a college, somebody's college project. Like that was the worst thing ever. <laughs> yes, yes, <definitely. laughs> like somebody, some rich kid's college project horror movie. Ooh, spooky! They're a cult. Get out of here. <laughs> I gotta tell you, and a lot of people don't agree with me about this, but I think one of one of the last I went and saw in the theater. Uh, of actual horror movies was Annabelle, and that was Annabelle. Another one. I was yeah. like, this sucks, dude. Like, I, oh, it was so bad. Like the acting, like, and I get it. Like horror movies are supposed to have bad acting, but, but no, yeah. they were trying too hard, like, to be serious, and it was just terrible. The the only killer doll I like is Chucky. <laughs> There is. And I noticed as you're saying this, as we cut out to commercial break for the 20th time, uh, <laughs> you have a Pennywise hat, and I, and I, I applaud you for having the old the old Pennywise, uh, yeah. not the new one, Definitely. because again, now look, I understand, now I don't want to sound like an old man here, and I understand, they, they did a decent job remaking it, like the mm -hmm. first one. However, it's still not close to the original, and then no. by the time we got to the sequel, forget it was the dumbest this is exactly what's wrong i don't know crap yeah like you're frozen tim from there carrey, was, right. tim carrey was like the best the best clown ever i agree it was scary oh yeah definitely definitely <laughs> and is there anything coming up for you that you want to plug? Like any matches, any films, any music, like anything com coming up for you? Uh, I mean, it's just a lot of, a lot of wrestling at this moment. Um, we got, you know, NWA TV tapings in Tampa coming up next weekend, 12th and 13th. And it's like, 
straight out of that, I'm going to Panama, straight past that. I got like double gigs in Texas, uh, straight past that is uh, NWA Chicago. There's a lot of NWA and there's, I got, I mean, I'm just in a never ending loop of wrestling. All I can tell you is check my social media, check my pages, Facebook a lot. I update. I, I like that. I don't know why that medium works for me, but uh, that's the best place to stay up to date on me. And uh, I don't know, man. That's what I got for okay. you. Definitely. And um, uh... <laughs> Good luck piecing all this together. <laughs> well, that that was actually the last question I was going to ask you is like, you know, where can fans follow you at? What's your social page? Yeah, just go to my just go to my Facebook and go from there, man. I mean, I'm on Instagram. I'm on all of them. You can find me, but just Facebook's the one I like mess with the most. So at least you'll get some valid thoughts and updates. Oh, all right, buddy. It sounds good. Well, thank. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it was it was it was really fun chatting. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I hope you can get all this together with all the cutouts and whatever. Definitely, uh, yeah. We're doing the best we can here, right? I know you're I know you're right. underground getting ready for the solar eclipse. Oh my god, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Stock up on ramen noodles. There you go. There you go. But don't eat them you know, raw because I heard there's little bugs in there. Ew, I saw, no, I saw really? a Facebook reel that said there's little bugs in there, so don't eat them raw. Oh, no. I don't know. I used to eat them raw all the time. I turned out just fine. Yeah. I used to eat them raw. Too. They were delicious yeah. and I didn't do anything. <laughs> no. Well, that explains it. Look at us. All right. <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the way your face is frozen on my screen is hilarious. All right, dude. <laughs> I got it, man. Take it easy. Bye. Have a good one, man. Adios. All right, man. Me too. Later, man. Bye.